students as you know that uh, for increasing the productivity of an organization various strategies are used and these strategies include uh, the development of the research process development of the processes through research uh, and uh, the installation of the new and high capacity system uh, in addition to these two uh, strategies uh, the effective and the better continuous management uh, is also a very commonly used which helps to reduce the work content of uh, uh, work content related with the job and the ineffective time so uh, for uh, reducing the work content and reducing the ineffective time uh, one of the common techniques known as work study uh, is used this work study involves the method study and uh, uh, the work measurement related techniques and in work uh, 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 study the first technique that is method study which is mainly used for uh, improving the existing method of doing a particular job so that time required for completing the job can be reduced and uh, in work measurement the ineffective time is identified at the same time the standard of performance is also set uh, and these standard of performances are extensively used in estimation of the requirements forecasting the cost or optimization of uh, the manpower and the resource utilization in order to increase uh, the output uh, by the worker it is necessary that whatever system he is using is efficient and effective so that it needs uh, the minimum in uh, me mechanical effort minimum minimum uh, efforts are required uh, for carrying out the job using a given system and uh, that is why the the systems which are to be used by the worker for producing uh, uh, output which is desired um, with the given inputs uh, the systems uh, should be designed in such a way that they can be used effectively easily by the worker with the minimum effort and uh, with the uh, uh, application of the minimum time so in order to design and develop in, uh, in order to design and develop such kind of systems uh, one uh, broad area uh, which is used in uh, uh, in in the industrial engineering is the ergonomics ergonomics is a, is a area of science which uh, includes the different areas uh, like engineering sciences uh, anatomy uh, like uh, the engine uh, the man and machine systems and physiology and the psychology so the experience of a person uh, a person having the experience in these uh, areas uh, will be able to work effectively uh, on the ergonomic aspects related with the design of different equipments so for designing such kind of system which can be used by the operator or human being effectively with the minimum effort and uh, cause uh, and leads to the maximum comfort in their use and application uh, fall in category of the ergonomics so ergonomics is basically composed of the two greek words which are ergos and the nomos ergos stands for work and nomos means the law uh, so here the the laws or rules related with work uh, are uh, the word meaning of uh, the ergonomics and uh, this uh, uh, ergonomics word was given by a group of uh, this name was given by a, a british a group of british scientists in 1949 and uh, this uh, uh, the ergonomics is also known as the human engineering in in different countries so it is commonly defined as the scientific study of the relationship between the man machine uh, with which he works and the environment so uh, basically it is targeted uh, to or related with with the aspects uh, or scientific study of the relationship between the man and the machine and the environment um, man and machine are being used so here how a man is working with the machine how comfortable he is how much efforts are being put in using a given machine and how the environment in which he is working is affecting the performance of man and machine both so in total 
the, the relationship between the man machine and the environment in totality it forms the ergonomics and uh, the relationship between these uh, three is effectively used for such kind of a system uh, which uh, will uh, result in the desired output and uh, uh, the uh, and minimum effort of uh, the worker. So, here the in environment component is particularly related with uh, that how uh, the environment or the conditions in which work is going on will be affecting the desired output. Uh, the ergonomics is uh, uh, as I have said is a uh, hi hybrid science because to work on the ergonomics uh, related aspects uh, uh, it is required knowledge is required in the area of anatomy, physiology, uh, psychology and engineering sciences. Anatomy basically deals with the, uh, the, the human beings and the animals and as physiology is about, uh, is about the strength speed, the body dimensions and the psychology is about that how the, uh, the information is processed by the operators or worker during the, uh, during the operation and how, what kind of action he takes while uh, uh, he is in work. So, the, 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 the response of the human being during the operation uh, and uh, in the working conditions of the mental strain and fatigue how he in, uh, receives the information and that information is processed falls in category of uh, the psychology and the engineering sciences basically deals with the design and development of the mechanical systems uh, which will be used by the operator in, uh, in course of uh, production or the manufacturing. So, ergonomics therefore is described as a hybrid science and uh, these are the four, uh, four main areas. Uh, which have been described in detail in the following sections. Uh, anatomy which uh, whose one component is anthropometry, uh, it uh, means uh, anthropometry is a combination of the two words which involves uh, the anthro and apometry. These are the two Greek words, anthro means the man and uh, the apometry stands for the measurements. So, the here the literal meaning of uh, uh, this anthropometry is about measurement of uh, the humans, which involves uh, the, the, the measurement of the body dimensions of uh, the human being with respect to uh, the di different reference points. Uh, so, these dimensions are uh, used in designing design of uh, the engineering in designing the engineering systems. The study of the measurement or proportions of the human body uh, proportions of the human body according to the sex, age, etcetera for identification of the dimensions of bones, muscles and adipose tissues are uh, uh, fall in category under the uh, anthropometry. Anthropology which involves uh, the study of the variation in uh, human characteristics such as height, weight, uh, ratio of leg length to the shoulder length and like this many other uh, dimensions of the human body. So, anthropology uh, in anthropology the body dimensions are measured and the data is collected about the human beings for whom the systems are to be designed whether it is a group of operators or the targeted group of the persons who will be using a given uh, designed device. So, here the height, the weight, the ratio of the leg length to the shoulder length like head dimensions, the neck dimensions, um, the foot dimensions, the fingers, arm means all the dimensions related to the body parts and uh, the measurement of these dimensions and the way by which these dimensions uh, vary for a group of people are measured and uh, the recorded. So, uh, and uh, all these things fall in category of the anthropology which involves the study of the variation in human characteristics. Uh, uh, these are the different characteristics and in addition to the other characteristics of the human body also included in anthropology. The variation in these characteristics of the human being are noted and uh, their mean and spread is calculated. So, according to the system which is to be designed the target or the, the, the possible users 
uh, are identified and uh, for those users anthropometric data is uh, obtained and uh, what is the mean of uh, the anthropometric data of particular characteristics which will be used in operation of particular device that is obtained and it is a spread either in terms of the standard deviation or um, in, in form of range is obtained which will help in identifying the minimum or maximum dimensions of uh, the engineering systems which will be used by the targeted group of population. These anthropometric data which has been generated and for which mean and the spread values have been calculated can be effectively used to determine the boundary areas of the workplace and the height and the shape of the seats and work tables, the designing and locating the handles and the levers so that they can be easily operated by the operator during the use. So, once if the data about the arm, about the wrist, about the maximum reach, about uh, the normal working area, uh, about uh, the uh, upper arm, lower arm, fingers means if the dimensions uh, of uh, these uh, uh, different body parts are available as per required in operation of a given device, these dimensions can be, uh, these data can be effectively used in identifying the boundary areas of the workplace. So, that you can locate the different compartments where materials sub assemblies or the tools will be placed during the use uh, for use of uh, use by the operator. Height and shape of the sheet and the work tables are also designed in light of the anthropometric data of the operators who, who will be using these sheets and the work tables. The designing and locating the handles and the levers like in uh, designing the hand brakes designing of uh, the different levers which are used in the mechanical systems and the machines uh, uh, are based on, uh, on the anthropometric data of the operators who will be using these systems. So, these are designed and located in such a way that operator can use them easily without uh, much effort uh, and uh, without uh, spending unnecessary time. The physical devices are used in one or other form every day in, in our life. Uh, the comfort and the performance of the people when using such devices is influenced by the extent to which uh, these facilities fit, uh, these facilities uh, fit to the people. So, uh, because uh, we, uh, nowadays every time uh, we are using one or other kind of the mechanical system uh, in our daily life, like right from the morning we use bed, after the bed uh, like uh, we use motorcycle or a scooter or bicycle for moving from one place to the another, then we use uh, chairs and tables in the offices. and. Uh, hand pumps or any other kind of device uh, which is being used by the human being human being and if it if its dimensions are not proper then the operator or the human being will not be comfortable in handling and using those devices so the comfort and the performance of the people when using such devices is significantly influenced by the extent to which these facilities fit to the people. Fitting of the, these devices to the people means uh, the compatibility of uh, the human being in using of these devices. If, uh, if the diameter of pen is, uh, is say 4 inch, then it will be very difficult to grip and handle in one particular way, so that uh, the, it can be it used effectively as desired. But normally, we, we, diameter of the pen can be of say 10 mm or 15 mm or 8 mm, which can be gripped effectively by the hand. If it is too thin also, then it will be very difficult to have proper control over the, over the pen and, uh, and it will be difficult to control its movement as desired. So, uh, the dimensions of these physical devices significantly affect the comfort and the performance 
uh, of the operator in their use. If, if they fit properly, then the, the, then the people will feel comfortable and they can use those devices effectively for long. But if they do not fit in, then uh, it will be difficult to use and operate them and they will not be able to deliver the desired performance. For example, the discomfort is experienced by uh, driving the bicycle of the child. Discomfort experienced by uh, a child in driving the big bicycle or when uh, an adult drives the children bicycle. There is a mismatch. A uh, children is driving big bicycle will not be able to yeah, operate properly or, or in a he will be very uncomfortable in using the big bicycle. In the same way the adult will also be uh, uncomfortable in driving the children's bicycle. So, the, the, bicycle, the, the for children's a small bicycle um, will fit uh, properly he will be able to use it comfortably and can go for long while inconvenience he will experience while driving the big bicycle. So, we can say that big bicycles will not be fitting to the child and that is why it will require the change in dimensions. So, the dimensions of the devices should be such that they will fit to the people who will be using those devices. And therefore, physical systems and devices are designed in light of their capability and anthropometric aspects of uh, the human being. Uh, the, uh, the anthropometric data or of the, of the population, targeted population is always kept in mind while designing the engineering systems. And the measurement of the uh, human body dimensions in anthropometry falls in two categories. One is a structural body dimensions and uh, the second one is the functional body dimensions. When the body dimensions of, are measured in anthropo anthropometry, these, are, these measurements are carried out in two different ways. In one case, the body, is, uh, body remains in a static position and in another case, while operation body is moving uh, and uh, under those uh, uh, under the moving conditions, the, the measurement of the body dimensions represents to the functional body dimensions. When body is functioning, how, what will be the dimensions uh, which will be possible uh, related with the different body parts. So, structural dimensions are basically measured with the body of a person in a static and standardized position. Like uh, if we go uh, to the tailor shop, he will ask us to stand in, in a particular position. So, he will be basically measuring the structural body dimensions in a static and standard position. These measurements have a specific application for example, designing of earphones, wrist watches or the goggles are also designed uh, using the structural body dimensions for the people with the different um, and the structural body dimensions. While the functional body dimensions are measured uh, by taking the body in uh, mes uh, these measurements are taken of the body positions resulting from its motions are called functional body dimensions. These dimensions are, are more commonly used in designing the engineering systems because most of the time body does not remain in a static and a standard position, it is in working or in use in one or other position. So, these dimensions are more widely used uh, for the design problems because most of the time human beings are doing something and they are not in a static position. For example, practical limit of arm reach is not found equal to the arm length, but it is affected by the motion of the other body members like shoulders and the trunk. The way by which these body parts are moving that decides the practical limit of the arm reach, not simply the length of the arm decides the reach, uh, uh, reach limit of the arm. So, uh, functional body dimensions are more commonly used in designing the engineering systems as compared to that of uh, the structural body dimensions. The anthropometric uh, the data that uh, is collected for designing the different engineering systems include the weight. Like the chair is designed in such a way that uh, it will be able to take the weight uh, either of kid 
or of adult or uh, the person of the different weights. The stretcher, the posture in a standing uh, Frankfurt and the sitting conditions and the arm span and the head length and the head breadth. These uh, are the sum of the dimensions of the body which are uh, measured and used in designing the structure and designing of the physical systems and uh, other dimensions uh, which are uh, measured under the anthropometry are ear to head height, the nasal length, the nasal breadth, a skeletal index that is equal to the sitting height into 100 divided by stretcher, the cephalic index that is equal to the head breadth into 100 divided by head length nasal index that is nasal breadth into 100 divided by nasal length. The span of leg stretcher index is found with the uh, uh, multiplication of the arm span into 100 uh, uh, and 100 uh, divided by stretcher. Corneal capacity. So, these uh, were the some uh, other anthropometric uh, uh, dimensions which are measured uh, in uh, for designing the engineering systems and uh, these uh, dimensions are measured using various tools uh, 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 to collect the data and find the, the average and the spread in the data and these are uh, uh, you can say tape, medical scale, spreading caliper, anthropometer and uh, the spring caliper, the large and small in size. And the, 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 these different diagrams shows uh, the, the way by which the different body parts, uh, uh, dimensions of the different body parts in different positions are measured. Here you can see uh, the different body dimensions uh, have been given and the way by which uh, they are measured here the height uh, of the person in sitting position from the head to the uh, this uh, sitting position is indicated by say 21 inch in the same way the different body dimensions for feet and uh, for uh, this uh, from this portion uh, to here the, the rest west portion and uh, the arm length and uh, here the uh, this length of the finger and uh, the, the length uh, low of the lower arm, the head dimensions, the neck dimensions and, uh, and the arm length fingers it means the different dimensions of the body parts like width of the head and the height of the head uh, has been shown and the way by which uh, uh, the different di body dimensions which are measured in anthropometry. These body dimensions are effectively used in designing the engineering systems. The another area uh, in ergonomics is the physiology. Physiology in ergonomics is mainly concerned with the, the three areas uh, of uh, 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 the man machine and systems and these include the way by which uh, uh, the body parts can be applied. The one area is the way by which uh, body parts can be applied regarding the accuracy, speed and the magnitude of the force because the different body dimensions have the different accuracy, speed and uh, the capacity to apply force. If we know about the ability of the different body parts to, uh, to apply force at different speeds and the accuracy then these uh, the engineering systems can be designed in such a way that uh, the heavy uh, muscles and strong muscles are used, uh, strong muscles are used for applying the heavy force and the light muscles are used for uh, applying uh, the light force. Another uh, aspect related to the physiology is the stamina of the human being. Human being can deliver energy for carrying out the operation at a particular rate. If the excessive energy is required for carrying out the job, then he needs break. 
So, in which way brakes should be designed if the heavy work is to be carried out by the operator, then that is covered under the human stamina. Uh, on an average, a 4 kilocalorie energy per minute can be delivered and uh, by the operator or the human being without need of any rest. But if the energy requirement of the work is much higher, then he will need rest after a certain time of the work. The third uh, aspect related with the physiology is the influence of the working conditions on the human performance like uh, the vibrations, light or uh, the ventilation, um, uh, illumination. Uh, these are the some of the conditions which significantly affect uh, the uh, performance of the human being. So, in which way the different working conditions related with the work area affect the capacity cap and the performance and the efficiency of the human being is covered under the effect of working conditions on the human performance and these aspects will be covered in detail one by one speed accuracy and the force with which a body part can uh, be used the information regarding the speed accuracy and the force of movement of each body member uh, helps in designing of the machines and the jobs in such a way that heavy work is done by the big muscles and the light work is done by the small ones. On the other hand is the stamina is about the knowledge of the human uh, stamina, uh, human being, uh, knowledge of the uh, stamina of the human being helps in organization of the human work. Uh, that is about at how long work will be continued and after how long time uh, the rest should be given and what should be the duration of the rest so that uh, operator can recover from the fatigue and again he can restart the work. In general an average uh, uh, ex energy expenditure uh, for a human being uh, is uh, at, the rate, at the rate of 4 kilocalorie per minute that is equal to 280 watt is maximum that a man is capable to deliver for long period without need of a rest. So, an uh, operator or a human being can deliver energy at the rate of 4 kilocalorie per minute, but uh, if the energy requirements are more then he will uh, require rest after a certain period of time. So, for the work that demands more energy than the 4 kilocalorie per minute worker will have to use his energy reserves and eventually he needs rest so that his muscles can recover and waste products have formed in blood during the work can be removed. So, here whatever undesirable chemical products which have been formed in the blood during the work are uh, gradually removed from the blood during the rest period because when ex um, physical activity or um, exercise is carried out uh, those uh, undesirable chemical products are generated in the blood which are uh, automatically removed by the chemical reaction uh, with the oxygen and uh, those uh, undesirable chemical products. So, the oxygen is uh, uh, and uh, during the rest period and uh, taking the uh, sufficient amount of the oxygen during the rest period, the, the undesirable wa waste products are uh, removed gradually from the blood and the operator becomes ready for another cycle of the work. So, the rest is required only in those cases where energy requirement for carrying out the job is greater than 4 kilocalorie per minute. The third aspect of the physiology is the influence of the working conditions. The working conditions uh, are known to significantly influence the performance of the human being because if the working conditions are not proper, they will lead to the very poor performance by the operator and which in turn will reduce the output from the worker and uh, therefore, the working conditions must be in proper shape. A poor ventilation, illumination, high temperature, noise level in, in, the, in the industry are frequently encountered and these lead to the loss of efficiency 
discontent, increased rate of accidents and the sickness of the operator. So, if the working conditions are not proper, it will reduce, uh, it will adversely affect the operator's performance and his health. At the same time, it will increase the tendency of the increased tendency of the accidents will be there and the operator health is also adversely affected. Therefore, knowledge of what constitutes a good working condition is important first. We should know what is required so that uh, uh, what is required as far as working conditions are concerned so that operator can work effectively without uh, lo losing any efficiency or without uh, leading to a situation where accidents may occur. So, the knowledge of the things which constitutes a good working conditions is important for designing the working conditions conducive, conducive for uh, the efficient working. The psychology is the third area of the ergonomics, uh, although there are so many things in uh, psychology, but we will be uh, targeting the things which are relevant to the ergonomics and the design of uh, um, the mechanical systems in such a way that operator can perform uh, the function effectively. The psychology in ergonomics is mainly concerned with the human behavior and his ability to work under the working conditions that is mainly related with the mental strain and the fatigue. How effectively he can work under the conditions of the mental strain and fatigue uh, by uh, receiving the information from the engineering systems which are being used by him and how effectively he makes the interpretation of those uh, informations and uh, then process them to take the suitable corrective action for uh, producing the desired output. In ergonomics, psychology is mostly concerned with the processing of the information and which uh, basically involves the sequence of uh, the signal, so which are uh, there uh, with the uh, with the system or with the machines which is being machine which is being used by him and these signals are received by the operator and based on the receiving of these signals, operator interprets them and based on the interpretation, he takes suitable decision and after taking decision, he takes suitable action. These may be related to the use or not to use, start or stop the particular step or when to move ahead. Based on that, the decision is taken and the action is taken for success of the process. Uh, for efficient performance of the task, it is necessary that uh, the operator uh, receives the information correctly, process the information properly, makes the correct interpretation and based on that he takes suitable decision and uh, then corrective action or the action which is required for success of the process. The efficient performance of the task therefore, to a great extent depends on how he uh, has received the information and the how information has been interpreted for taking suitable decision. In the mechanical systems, this area, uh, this is the fourth area of the ergonomics which is mainly related uh, with the uh, mechanical systems which will be used by the worker. Uh, an operation, uh, operation of the man on poorly designed machine in bad working conditions does not constitute an efficient man machine system. The man should get the proper system um, for carrying out the desired job and the good working conditions in which uh, the work will be done, then only it will constitute good man machine systems. The, this part of the ergonomics that is the mechanical systems is mainly relate, related uh, with the design of the mechanical systems in such a way that the operator can perform the task with the least effort, fatigue and the mental strain. So, objective is to design the systems which will be used by the operator during the work is uh, that uh, it takes less effort and uh, causes less fatigue to the operator and the mental strain during the operation. So, that he can perform for long without need of frequent breaks and uh, so that uh, the operator's output can be increased and the if, uh, productivity of the system can be increased. Nowadays, in our daily life, uh, these systems are always used in uh, one or other form. 
So, mechanical systems are the systems which uh, are used by the human being or by the operator in course of uh, the operation, production or manufacturing uh, the ma man and mechanical systems, uh, the, the, what, uh, the man who is working on a particular uh, machine combination of the bo uh, bo both uh, or combination of the man and machine leads to form a system which is commonly known as a man machine system or MMS. The man machine system is defined as a combination of the man and the some machines interacting with each other to bring about the desired output from given inputs. For example, a pilot is driving aircraft uh, to uh, to get uh, the desired output of uh, transporting the people from uh, one place to the another or painter is handling the brush in controlled manner so that he is able to come up with the kind of drawings or designs which he wants to put in uh, on the paper. So, here the painter is a man and the machine or the mechanical system being used by him is the brush and uh, in the first case pilot is a man and uh, the aircraft is the machine which is being used by uh, the pilot uh, for getting the desired output. All MMS work in some kind of the physical environment. So, the man machine systems which are working in some kind of physical environment uh, these are basically uh, uh, includes uh, uh, the work space and the ambient environment. The work space should be designed in such a way that uh, the operator can use the machines effectively uh, without undue fatigue and the mental strain and the environment in which work is being done uh, should be such that it does not adversely affect the operators the performance. The man machine systems can be classified on the basis of the various factors. The two main factors based on which man machine systems are classified will be covered here. The based on the nature of the man involvement, the extent up to which the man uh, interferes with the machines for the success of the operation, we can classify the clo closed loop systems and uh, the open loop systems. And uh, the another factor based on which man machine systems can be classified is uh, uh, the kind of the operation which is there, the manual systems in which uh, the energy required for success of the operation is delivered by uh, the operator. Well, in mechanical systems, these are power driven systems, but uh, the operator receives the information, takes the suitable decision and then takes corrective action for the success of the operation. While in automatic systems, the receiving of the signals taking suitable decision and then action is also taken by the man, uh, by the machines itself. So, not only the power driven systems are uh, there for, uh, uh, for uh, delivering the required energy for success of the operation, but the, uh, uh, but the activities like receiving the signals taking suitable decision and the action is also taken uh, by the automatic system. So, these uh, classifications will be covered in detail one by one. Here closed loop systems are those in which a continu continuous control of the machine is done uh, by the operator for its success. And these systems work on the basis of the feedback like uh, uh, for success. Uh, of uh, these operations, it is necessary that the, the feedback is continuously uh, given by the operator uh, to uh, the uh, machines and it, uh, then he takes the corrective action so that the desired functions can be performed uh, by the machine to deliver the desired output. Feedback provides uh, the information about the error or deviation from the required one to control the process continuously. Like uh, while driving, the driver continuously steers the car or the automobile to reach from one destination to the another. So, driving of a car needs a continuous control. So, that is a closed loop system where continuous attention is required by the machine or the uh, mechanical system for the success of its operation. So, closed loop systems are based on the feedback and this uh, based on the feedback uh, 
the corrective actions are taken continuously by the operator for the success of the operation. So, here this example I have given the man driving uh, a car or a student writing the text. For writing also uh, the, uh, the student or the teacher has to continuously control uh, the movement of the pen during uh, the writing. So, for uh, writing perfectly as per requirement pen movement of the pen is to be controlled continuously. In open loop, loop systems, uh, these uh, systems need no further control once these have been started or rather these cannot be controlled once these have been uh, started. Uh, actually, there is always some kind of uh, the internal feedback existing within any open loop system. For example, firing of the missile. Firing of the missile is continuously controlled by the gravitational force, but uh, manually it uh, is not controlled uh, by uh, the operator or by the persons who are using these devices. Similarly, throw, throwing of the stone, once the stone has been thrown it cannot be controlled, but it can be it, it is controlled actually by the some sort of internal feedback which is existing in form of the gravitational force. So, such kind of systems which are once started uh, uh, need no further control or rather they cannot be controlled further. These are known as open loop systems. Manual systems are those in which energy or the power required to operate the tool or device for success of operation is given by the operator himself. For example, the typist working on the typewriter or the man with the hammer. Uh, the op hammer is operated by the man to give the desired shape to the raw material. So, here the, the, the desired force is applied by the typist for the typing and the desired force or the energy is delivered by the man for handling the hammer and to get the desired results. In mechanical system, and the, uh, man in mechanical type man machine systems, uh, the man with the power driven machine these are the two components. The man operates uh, the power driven machine. He actually does not deliver the power required for success of the operation, but he controls the machine. The function of operator here is essentially to process the information, takes the suitable decision and control the machine, so that operation can be successfully performed. And these kind of systems are also called the semi automatic machines for example, a turner working on the lathe. So, the desired power for turning operation it is delivered by the electric motor while uh, the desired feed can be given by the operator and he can start or stop the feed as per requirement. So, regarding the starting or stopping or giving the feed, uh, the action is taken by the turner, uh, by the turner while uh, the desired power for uh, uh, rotating the tool is delivered by the power driven electric power driven motor. In the same way, the blacksmith using the powered hammer to get the desired size and shape of the raw material. So, such kind of systems are called semi automatic systems in which power required for success of the operation is delivered by the power driven machine or the electric motor itself while the control function is basically performed by the operator itself. Uh, in the automatic uh, man machine systems, uh, in these systems, the system automatic type of man machine systems consists of machines that are expected to perform all operational functions like sensing, information, processing and decision making in addition to the running and delivering the desired power required for success of the operation. Still in these systems certain functions like monitoring, programming, maintenance are performed by the human being. These systems also need human intervention at a certain interval of the time for regular maintenance or for the for giving the desired program or for feeding the desired programs. The automatic lathes and the automatic landing aircrafts are the typical examples of um, the automatic 
systems. These systems which are being used by the operator for carrying out the desired jobs are designed in light of the anthropometric dimensions of the operator or the targeted in the people who will be using these systems. So, it is important to identify what are those relevant body parts and which will be used for carrying out the job using the mechanical systems. So, what are those important and the relevant body dimensions which will be used in design of the engineering systems and then defining the relevant population who will be using the design engineering systems whether these will be the KG children's or the army men's. This help will the, 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 the definition regarding the relevant population will help to identify the range of the anthropometric data which can be there. This helps to establish the dimensional range that needs to be considered in design what principles should be followed in designing a given engineering system. This is largely based on the engineering system which is to be designed and the targeted population. These uh, principles are based on the design for the extremes like the design will be targeted for uh, the, the people of the highest uh, dimensions or the minimum dimensions that is about the designs for uh, extremes. The design for adjustable range is about uh, the using a particular device uh, by the people of the varying anthropometric data while the design for averages is uh, uh, is uh, means this principle of the design is used when there is no fixed targeted population who can use the given engineering system so these uh, the principles will be uh, discussed in detail one by one uh, for designing the mechanical systems, we need to identify what percentage of the population will be accommodated and will be covered by the given engineering design. We have to take suitable decision whether it will be 90, 95 or 99 percent. To get the anthropometric data for the targeted population from the record and add the suitable allowances as per needs. So, for example, thickness of socks or the cloths in um, design of the relevant items. The typical anthropometric data which is uh, generated and um, uh, taken from the record uh, for uh, design purpose here uh, the stretcher height this the one represents the stretcher height from the, the complete height of the person right from the bottom to the top. The eye height is the given num the stretcher height num number is given one say the eye height number is given 2 and shoulder height then elbow uh, height 4 and uh, the knuckle height 5. These typical body dimensions uh, will be shown for uh, both male and female uh, he, um, persons uh, in this slide. Uh, we can see here uh, that the different uh, body dimensions are like a stature eye height, shoulder height, elbow height and the knuckle height. Uh, these are heights uh, from uh, the uh, horizontal portion on which uh, the someone or the person is uh, standing. Uh, uh, then depending upon the sex of the person whether it is male or uh, she is female, uh, here the body dimensions are different for the different percentile of uh, the person for different percentile range. For fifth percentile, it is uh, it is on the lower side, and for ninety fifth percentile, it is on the higher uh, side. So height uh, or the stature for the male, it is say for fifth of percentile, it is sixty three point uh, uh, seven inch. All these dimensions are in inch. In the same way, so from this table, we can see uh, the different uh, heights from uh, the the level where person is standing for male and female and for the different percentile ranges. So, here these dimensions can be effectively used in designing the engineering systems which are uh, uh, to be used by the human being. Now, in this slide we will see some other anthropometric uh, dimensions which are measured like uh, the eye height is this one from the ground level uh, in the sitting position. Uh, this uh, uh, elbow rest height that is this height 
and uh, here the knee height the buttock knee length here that is this length and uh, the thigh clearance height that is this one and the eye height in the sitting position. So, different numbers have been given and the corresponding uh, the values uh, have been given in the next table. So, here some other body dimensions with respect to the different uh, uh, reference points in sitting positions have been given here for uh, the male and female uh, for uh, fifth, uh, fiftieth and uh, ninety fifth of percentile and all these dimensions are also has been given in, in the inch. So, here these dimensions can be used in designing of the seats, the work rest heights, the, the locations where the different levers uh, and uh, the, the tools should be located uh, during the operation and, uh, uh, and likewise the engineering systems can be designed in such a way that uh, the operator and the human beings of the targeted population can be used these systems effectively. And uh, these uh, designs are uh, usually based on the three principles as I have described earlier. The designs for uh, the extreme individuals is based on the extreme anthropometric data for the human beings who are to be covered. The design of the physical system is needed to accommodate the individuals with the relevant anthropometric data at one or other extremes. The, for example, designing of the height of the doors may be based on to accommodate the tall individuals so that either 95 or 99 percentile of the people are covered. Such a height would also accommodate the people of uh, the small heights. The minimum dimension of, uh, uh, of a system uh, depends on the upper percentile value of the anthropometric data. Like what will be the minimum height of the gate that is decided by the upper percentile of the people who are to be covered by that uh, height. So, in the same way uh, the maximum dimension of the facility is based on the lower percentile value of the relevant anthropometric uh, feature of the people who are to be covered. Like a target is to cover only the uh, first uh, or fifth or 10th percentile of the people will be left out. So, what will be the, uh, um, the, the no, a percentile of the people who will be considered or who will not be considered in designing um, the engineering system. So, but it is very common to use uh, 95th and uh, the 5th percentile value uh, for the designing of the engineering systems. If we see here the, 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 the way by which uh, the percentile of the people who are covered with the change of the design parameters. So, if we select a very low range of the design parameter, very minimal number of the people are covered and uh, these uh, will go on increasing. This, uh, this number actually is uh, the increase in and the number of population increase in the percentile of the population increases non-linearly at uh, the extreme ends. Here it increases very rapidly or uh, on the higher side on the extreme side also it uh, the percentile of the population increases very rapidly uh, 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 it means non-linearly. If we see here the linear range exists only in between. So, here uh, if uh, the design parameter, uh, design parameters are normally selected in such a way that uh, neither too low or neither on the too high side uh, the design characteristics are there for a mechanical system. Uh, normally 95 percentile of the people, 95 percentile of the people to the 90 uh, to the fifth percentile of the people are uh, targeted um, to be covered in designing the engineering systems. So, the design parameters are selected in such a way the mo mostly the 95th percentile of the per uh, anthropometric data to the 95th percentile of the anthropometric data uh, related people are covered by the given engineering systems. Uh, if uh, the efforts are made to cover the entire 100 percentile of the people uh, by the design 
range unnecessary it will increase the cost of uh, the product uh, which may not uh, significantly increase the number of the populations will which will be covered because most of the population fall in the range of 5th to 95th percentile range. So, the value corresponding to 95th and uh, the 5th percentile are feasible because accommodation of the 100 percentile would push the trade off costs to the higher figures as compared to the additional benefits to the benefits which will appear in form of increased number of users. Design for the averages, uh, this principle is used where design for extremes is not feasible and, uh, and the conditions where the engineering systems can be used uh, by the any kind of uh, the people or there is no fixed uh, targeted population who can use the given engineering system. The principle, uh, this principle of the design is used when users do not belong to a particular group or the population like height of the water tap in public place. The public place water tap can be used by the any kind of uh, by the person of any height. He may be a, a, a children or he, he may be uh, adult also. So, the height of the water tap is uh, uh, decided in such a way that it would cause less inconvenience to the persons who can who will be using the water tap. The height is kept in such a way that it would be less comfortable for uh, less uncomfortable for most of the people uh, than one designed for the um, uh, extremes. Um, this uh, does not mean that it, it would be optimum for all, but it would cause less difficulty and inconvenience than one which might be uh, of, of or higher or the lower heights. Uh, to accommodate the people of varying anthropometric feature, some of the features of the engineering systems are designed using the principle of adjustable range. For example, height of the computer chair in the computer lab or the distance between the crank and the seat in bicycle are designed for adjustable range. Adjustable range is commonly designed for 5th to 95th percentile range of the population. Now, I shall conclude this presentation. In this presentation, mainly uh, you have seen that uh, ergonomics is uh, very effectively used in designing the engineering systems, but it needs uh, the knowledge of the anthropology, physiology, psychology and uh, the engineering sciences, uh, so that uh, uh, the, the engineering systems can be designed in such a way that the operators can use um, them comfortably with the minimum effort. Thank you for your attention please. Thank you.